Hello again, I'm Mike Mazzalongo, another edition of the Bible Talk video blog. You know, I believe that the most sincere thing that we can desire for somebody else is their happiness. It's usually the thing that parents want the most for their children. They want their children to be happy. We also believe, and rightly so, that whether rich or poor, healthy or sick, happiness is the most important commodity that we possess. Well, today I want to share with you four basic rules that will contribute to your lifetime happiness if you put them into practice on a regular basis. Very quickly now, rule number one, live the spiritual life. Live the spiritual life. Keep your priorities in order, understanding that living according to the pleasure principle is eventually self-destructive. If you work at making the doing of God's will in your everyday life the priority objective, you'll have your priorities straight and you will be able to build a happy life based on sound judgment. So live the spiritual life. Rule number two, live one day at a time. One day at a time. You know, people ruin whatever happiness they have in their day by squandering their energy on tomorrow's problem. You know, God gives us a certain amount of energy and resources to take care of our lives one day at a time. And what do we do? We take today's energy, today's resources, spiritual and emotional, and we invest them into worrying about tomorrow and the next day. That leaves us with not enough to take care of today's problems or even to experience today's happiness. God has promised that He will supply exactly what we need, but He supplies it one day at a time. So enjoy the happiness that you have today and don't waste it on worrying. And you can prepare for tomorrow and you can be concerned for tomorrow, but you're wasting your energy if you're worrying about tomorrow. And also remember that few of our fears, if any, ever materialize in the way that we think that they will. Okay, rule number three, do not violate your conscience. Isn't that a simple one? Do not violate your conscience. Doing wrong always hurts us. No matter how small, no matter what others say, no matter what reasoning or lack of reasoning we use to permit ourselves to do wrong, when we sin, we hurt our conscience and we you know, we injure ourselves and a hurt conscience hurts. So keep your account with the Father at zero. Go to Him in prayer each day to deal with your hurt. Is there something on your conscience? Is there something bothering your conscience? Is there something ruining your day because your conscience is bothering you? Go to the Father. Take care of that business right away. Lie down at night with a clear conscience and you will be happy and you'll sleep. <laughs> much better as well. There is no happiness without peace of mind. Okay, rule number four, purge your life of past failure. Purge your life of past failure. Nothing destroys the joy of the moment like guilt from the past. Whatever it is, lying, cheating, divorce, violence, cowardice, whatever failure there is, remember for you who are Christians, God has forgiven you and along with that forgiveness is the right to be happy again. You know that prodigal, uh, the, the, the proverb of the prodigal son, very famous, uh, well-known um, uh, 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 story, um, uh, parable rather, there's the word I'm looking for, parable of the prodigal son. You, you know the story, he leaves the younger son, he wastes his father's money and he, 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 he's involved in riotous and immoral living and to the point where he has no food left, no honor left, he's, he's left eating the food that the pigs are eating. I mean for a Jew you couldn't get any lower than that. And then the, the young man finally comes to his senses and he, he decides he's going to return home and uh, just beg his father to take him back, not, not as a son, but as a slave, so that at least he can, he can eat and have a, a dry place to, uh, to, to, to stay. And, and what, what do we see? You know, when we read that parable, what do we see? Uh, his father uh, 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 welcomes him back and, and gives him clothing and puts a ring on his finger and he puts sandals on his feet. But the interesting thing of that story for me is the father, in addition to taking him back, also throws a party for him. He kills the fatted calf and they have a big party. And, 
And the idea of killing the fatted calf and having a party means that the father has given back to the son the right to be happy again. The right to be happy again. You see, with forgiveness comes the right to smile again. So let's not waste our life by worrying over past failure. Certainly those of us who are Christians have no need to do this. It's one way that Satan uh, uses, one tactic that he uses to spoil uh, what we have. And sometimes Satan can't draw us into uh, immoral behavior or to reject Christ, but he can take the edge off of our happiness. He can ruin the joy that God has legitimately given to those that he's forgiven. Don't let him do that. So if you're a Christian, remember to maintain the happiness that you have in Christ by living in the spirit and not in the flesh. By uh, living life just one day at a time. Just slow down one day at a time. Uh, don't violate your peace of mind with foolish sin and worldliness. It's not worth it. And then finally, don't allow the past to ruin the present or frighten you for the future. Your past is gone in Christ. It's nailed to the cross on Golgotha. Just leave it there. Just leave your sins nailed to the cross. Don't go back and worry about them and review them. That's all finished. That's all gone. God has given you the right, the permission to smile and to be happy again. Of course, if you're not a Christian, then the only way to true happiness is to become a child of God. How do we do that? We confess the name of Jesus. We acknowledge our faith in Him and we express our faith in Him in repentance and baptism. If I can help you in any way with information about that, Bible study, prayer, please don't hesitate to call me or contact me, mike at bibletalk.tv, and I'll certainly be able and happy to answer any of your questions. We'll see you again soon with another video blog.